Terry Crews. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do it, what? man. You, you're doing it right now. I'm gonna show you how you to do, do it. It yeah. looks like you got like six cell phones in your jacket <laughs> and they're all, they're all ringing at the same time. It's just going up. How are you, sir? Dude, I am so good. It so has been a good. long time since I last saw you. You yeah. know, there's been a whole pandemic between everything. I know. You've gone through it. You wrote another book. Yes, I did. Congratulations on that tough, my journey to true power. So when I when I heard about the book, I was like, tough, my journey to true power. I was like, oh, Terry's writing, it's like a weightlifting book. <laughs> I figured it was just gonna be about the muscles and everything, and yet there's basically nothing. It's, it seems yes. like this whole book is about you emotionally weightlifting. Yes, yes. I, I had to redefine what tough was in my life. You know what I mean? Um, as, as a kid, I mean, first of all, I was filled with rage. I, I, and I'm gonna start at the beginning just a little bit because uh, my father was an alcoholic mm -hmm. and he was addicted to alcohol and my mother was addicted to religion which created a really toxic relationship. And uh, at five years old, I grew up watching my father knock my mother out on the regular. Right. Um, and it was something that changed me. I mean, my whole thing, when I saw him do that, I was like, hey man, it's your world. This, it's your way or the highway. Mm -hmm. And I learned that that was the only way to be a man. Um, and it was through rage. And it was, I would rather be feared than loved. And it got me a lot. I mean, I lived my life like it was a revenge movie. Right. Okay. Right. And a lot of people see me now, uh, you know, as oh yeah, it's so funny and so great and the whole thing. But but this is the thing, man. I I was filled with rage. I, and I, I mean, I, I, I used to snap on people. I, I read that in the book, and I'm not even joking. Like in, in the first, let's say, quarter of the book, first 25 percent, I was like, I'm scared to have Terry on the show. <laughs> Because you, like, in the book, you talk about this, this journey, you know, and you, yeah. you talk about young Terry, you know, and I, I like, it's like there's multiple Terrys in this book in your, in your story. You talk about young Terry, and you talk about your dad as old Terry, big yeah. Terry, and, you yes. know, you talk about the terror and the fear, but also the rage that you felt at being unable to protect your mom, unable to protect the house, and, and you were scared. But then it gets to a part of the book where one day you, you, you developed enough and you, you beat your father, like, I, in one of the I scariest ways. I got him. And, and w this was so wild because, you know, uh, growing up in that kind of household with the, with the intense alcohol and religion, the whole thing, I became a pleaser. I became a searcher for, I, I wanted approval. Oh, and a, I was addicted right. to approval. Yeah. And the thing is, is that if I didn't get it, it was, it was one of those things that would make me very, very, you know, angry. Right. And, but one thing that I discovered, uh, once by the time... I became an adult and I said, you know, I knew I needed to get strong because one day I would have to kill my father. I, I, that was the vision that I always had in my head because he was such a terror right. in Your our house. Right, family was terrified, And yeah. one day he, I mean, and I, as a grown man, I was 30 years old and I, I, I remember, it, we called it a Christmas, Christmas from hell. And I, I get a little emotional thinking about it, but uh, I took my family home for Christmas and I, he told me that he was going to behave. And I said, cool, because they hadn't been around. And my yeah, kids had yeah. never been raised with any domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And me and my wife go out, and he decides he's going to hit my mother in the mouth. And what was crazy, I get a call. We're on the road. We're, we're, we're about to go to dinner. And my mother, my, my aunt calls me and says, your mother just got hit in the mouth. Her tooth is sideways. Man, I turned the car around. And I told him, get everybody out of the house and just leave us alone. And I went and I confronted him and I said, hey, man, what are you doing? You promised. And he said, oh, man, get out of here, man. And bow! And I hit this man. I don't know how long it was. I know I beat him from downstairs all the way up to his room. He's bleeding. He's, he's screaming. And I... All I could think about is this is revenge. This is what I always wanted. This is what you made us go through. Mm -hmm. This is the revenge. I all, this is going to fulfill every dream, every fantasy, everything is going to be in this moment. And I felt nothing. 
you talk about that. It's, it's a scary <laughs> moment where you, you're wailing on him and then you cry at the end of it and you felt even emptier than when that moment started. You didn't feel powerful. You didn't feel, you didn't get the revenge that, that, that you thought you were gonna get. Dude, you, didn't, you didn't get the closure. I, I did it. And I'm like, this is supposed to be the end of the movie. Did you know at that moment that Terry had anger issues or did you think that was an isolated incident? No, no, see, my wife was telling me the whole time. She's like, you, got, you are really angry. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm angry? <laughs> you know, I, I'm getting angry yet you telling me I'm angry. Right. You know, and, and I never saw it. You understand, it's, it's, it's something that's so imperceptible because you have it tied in with your manhood. Mm. This is something that's tied mm. into you. It's bravado. And you go, hey, man, this is what you do. Somebody, I remember when one man d disrespected my wife. I picked him up, put him on his head on the concrete. And, I'm, and my wife was like, no, you have to promise me you will never, ever do this again. And I'm like, but I have to. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is how I prove I'm a man. This is what I'm put on earth to do. How did, you, how did you change that? That's what I want to know. Like, People talk about the change, but how do you change that? How does Terry go from being the person who snaps, the person who's angry, the person who proves himself, to the person who says, I'm not gonna react? Because I'll jump to another part in the book yeah. that some people know about as a story, but you, you, you've never told it in, in as much depth as you, has in, as you have in the book, is the now infamous story where you were, in a Holly, you were at a Hollywood party, That's right. and one of the most powerful agents in the business is there, and he comes up and he grabs your crotch. Yep, yep. You know, and at first you're like, oh, was that a mistake? What's going on? And he laughs and he grabs your crotch again That's in right. front of everybody and he just laughs it off. Yep. And you didn't do anything. And the irony of the whole thing is then people online were like, man, Terry Crews, you're gonna have all those muscles and you ain't gonna do shit and someone grabs your dick, you're not gonna punch him, you know what I mean? And then they're like, well, these fake muscles, these inflatable muscles, people right. roasting you. But you talk about in the book how you didn't want to do anything. That's right. Tell, explain to me how that change comes about. What, 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 what shifts in your perspective? First of all, it was 2017, and I'd already been through seven years of therapy. Um, my wife left me in 2010. Um, first of all, I had an addiction to pornography. I had anger. I had all kinds of stuff. And she was like, you know what? I'm done. And this is the thing. I was very successful. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I had movies and right. TV, and everybody knew who I was. And, and my trick to life was fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is you make it and you're fake. You're oh. still fake. It was an image. It was the Terry Crews image is what everybody fell in love with. And my wife ended up married to that image. Wow. But the real me was still messed up, broken. And, and when she left me, it was the highlight. It was like, wait a minute. And, and first I was like, go ahead. I'm Terry Crews. Shoot, go get me another woman. And it was so stupid because I heard myself talking like this. And I went, maybe it's me. Hmm. Maybe it is me. And dude, you got to understand, I, I got the best advice I ever received in my entire life. A friend of mine said, hey, man, I can't promise you you're going to get your wife and family back. But you have to get better for you. Hmm. Now, my whole life therapy, especially in, in, in male culture, in black culture, therapy was looked at as quackery. I right. mean, they were like, you can't cure crazy, you know? And that was, <laughs> that was a said yeah. a lot, you know? Uh, in fact, my father went to go see a psychologist for his alcoholism, and the psychologist killed himself a week later. Damn. And I was like, oh, that don't work. Damn. And I'm going, what? And, but this was the thing. I'm at rock bottom. I have nothing. That was your D-Day. And that was the D-Day. Mm -hmm. And I went to therapy, and I discovered this anger and where it was coming from right. and this, this, you know, this need for people's approval that would send me through the roof that would make me a high achiever. You uh -huh, understand what uh -huh. I mean? Like, you uh, will do anything. You knew how to use it to get where you need to go. Yeah, I mean, that's now, where the success comes right. from, but the disapproval brought the rage. So now, Terry Crews has this rage. He's working on it. He goes to therapy. Sometimes I feel like what happens to people, though, is they don't understand that anger is a natural part of being a human being. And so when they come out, they go, now I have no anger. <laughs> the universe right. is my yeah. spirit. Yeah. And you, so now, how do you deal with anger? How do you, like, everyone gets angry. Yes. How do you now deal with it? What did you learn as a healthy outlet for your anger? First of all, you know, I, I did come out like that the first year. I was like, peace and love to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was the baddest acting I ever did. Like, <laughs> sit your ass down. <laughs> peace and love. You know, <laughs> it was bad. Yes. It was horrible. Right. But 
I actually got to understand. Remember now, this is the whole thing. You can you can be angry and sin not. It's a, it's a biblical phrase. Yes. And the whole thing was righteous anger is a good thing. And it was about accountability. Mm -hmm. Holding people accountable is how you deal with your anger. It's mm. like there's a legal way to do everything. My answer to everything before was like playing chess, was turn over the chessboard. Right. I was like, if I can't get a problem, ah! <laughs> and what I learned was, wait, 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 wait. I got to use wisdom here. I have to figure out this problem. Maybe going backward, I can go forward two mm. steps. And all of a sudden, my my everything about the energy toward anyone that I was angry at yeah. was a thoughtful, methodical move. And this is what I did with Adam Bennett. It was cha it changed everything because I knew because my wife had made me promise too. She was like, don't you ever do. And you I was like, yeah, I promise, again. I promise. But that was the test. And I remember taking her hand and we went into the car and I drove home. And now, mind you, my first mindset was to drive back through the club and like Terminator and, <laughs> you know, I was going to do it. But I went home, but you got to understand this, because this is the support that I had the whole time I was driving home, my wife said, I'm proud of you, Terry. Mm. I'm proud of you, because she saw me throwing people around. Right, She's seen right, it. Right. And she was like, I'm so proud this of was you. the first time we had broken the pattern. That support that said, I'm doing this right. I'm doing this right. And then I went legal, and I went to the head of, of William Morris Endeavor, mm -hmm. and I said, what are you gonna do about this predator that you have running in your hallways? And they were like, well, you know, look, he's the big man, so we can't do anything. And I was like, hell no. I said, dude, you work for me, and he laughed. He laughed in my face. And I said, wow, okay. And you know what, it made me more emboldened. And I got stronger, and I went like, all right, you wanna play this game, we are gonna play it. We are gonna play it all the way out. And what happened is, Quiet is kept. Other people join my case because you don't rob the biggest bank in, in the, you know, in the state, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, right? You always rob little banks. And what was happening is there was little people. There were all these other people that came out that said, hey, man, he did I the same thing to me. And they joined my case. And he was like, oh, white flag. I'm out of here. I'm going to retire. And I didn't want any money. I just said, man, you cannot molest the clients and go back to work. That's all. I said, dude, that's all I wanted. You cannot do it. You can't go back to work. And he's out. And he's out. And this is the thing. Checkmate. So, so, so great. I, I remember that moment distinctly because you, you know, you, you came out, the Me Too movement was happening. You know, yes. you, you spoke about your case. People were shocked and, you know, and a lot of men were emboldened to say like, hey, I, I've also had this issue. And yes, you know, statistically men are minuscule compared to women, but it was an interesting story that, that gave a fuller complexity to what we're trying to get rid of in society. Yes. People loved you. They're like, Terry Crews on Twitter, it was amazing. And then you talk about this in the book. A few years after that, Terry Crews on Twitter became one of the <laughs> most hated individuals yes. almost overnight. Yes. It was people like, he's a coon, he's, he betrayed yes. black people. He was, and it all came around Black Lives Matter. That's, yes. what, that's what came around, was Black Lives Matter. And you said something, and, and, and I paraphrase it, you know, because in the, in, the, in the book you talk and you lay out the tweet, was where you yeah. say, you know, essentially, I don't want white supremacy the same way. I don't want black supremacy. Right. I want us to all be equal as people. Right. People were like, oh, really, Terry, black supremacy? Yeah. And I mean, they, they tore into you. Yeah. But in the book, you talk about how, A, you, you didn't even know that that was a talking point some people use. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you weren't trying to say what people thought you were trying to say. Right, well, this is the thing. Black supremacy has nothing to do with white people. When I was in Flint, Michigan, the drug dealer was a black supremacist. The gang member I was scared of and could not move around was the black supremacist. And what I meant was, is this whole thing, if we don't start this movement with the idea of reconciliation, we are just postponing a greater war. Mm -hmm. And my whole thing is I didn't hear a lot of reconciliation because reconciliation doesn't mean agreement. Yes. You know what I mean? It's one of those things, I, I wanna bring this up because there's a story about the wisest man in, in the world. It, it was Solomon. And two women came to him and they brought a baby and they said, we have this baby we and this, each baby is mine. And, the, the baby, and yeah. the, so Solomon, the wisest man says, okay, what we're gonna do is cut the baby in half and I'll give you a half of the baby and you get the other half. And one woman said, yes, that's the way we do it. But the other woman said, no, no, save this baby. No, in fact, give it to her, give it to her. And he said, that's the mom. That's reconciliation. 
It doesn't mean you get the result you want. It means you're saving it because dividing it is going to kill it. But and when I look at America, yeah. dividing it is going to kill it. And the whole thing is reconciled. We have to reconcile. We have to, white and black, male and female, Republican, Democrat, we have to find a way to reconcile or we're going to kill what we have. It's beautiful as a thought, and I agree with it. I think the issue... Yeah. I think the issue some people had, you know, is reconciliation cannot take place before there's any type of accountability. Mm -hmm. In order for us to reconcile, there has to be some sort of accountability. People have to say, this is what is happening, and this is what we're going to do to rectify that situation. Just like you talked about reconciling with your wife. Yes. You know, in order for you guys to reconcile, you had to fix, you had to acknowledge, you had to say, I have a problem. Yeah. And I think what a lot of people thought in that moment is they felt like, I understand when reading the book now, you, you are saying something that, in my honest opinion, is almost a step ahead. But people were going, yeah, but Terry, right You're now, right. we're looking for accountability first. You're right. Right now, black people in America are saying, hey, can we just have an agreement on how America does not treat everybody equally? Yes. You know, we don't want everyone to be treated equally badly. We want everyone to be treated equally. No, I, I know? totally agree. And, and it, it felt like to some people you had, you had skipped. You were just like, guys, guys, kumbaya. Yeah. Let's all just be no, together. I, I, I totally, and listen, you know? I, I totally understand that. But this is another thing, and, and, and I agree. And, and, you can't have a nuanced conversation on Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the worst the mistake. Big, the that biggest was, that mistake. That was your first mistake. That was the first, that was if your first there was mistake. any accident, that was it. You just... that, that was maybe one of my favorite parts of the book, <laughs> is when you talk about, because you tweeted that, and you can tell when someone thinks they've got swag in a tweet, you were like, let me tell you something, what we need yeah. to do in this world, white oh, supremacy, uh, black supremacy, all come together, bam. And yeah, then you were like, oh, I, no, and I went and got a sandwich. You made, you made a sandwich. I went and got a sandwich. You I made a sandwich, you were like, ah, I killed it, I killed it. Believe you me, I went, oh, no. That's Black supremacy not what I was meant. trending. That's not what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but 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 you can't have that. I, I, I totally understand right. that. Um, and I, I think you're right. And I know you're right. Right. And I actually, w one of my things was, is just when I know my people and I love my people. And the big thing was. Black people need to hold other black people accountable. It's which they, our, which they do. Well, see, because we, we, accountability, right? And we, which do, we do, and we which do, we do. And I'm not saying we don't. Uh, but but my thing is, as a black man, and as a man who had been in these kind of situations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I I just knew that it it needed be to be said by someone like me, right? In order, because what my thing is, I just wanted. Peace, and yeah. I guess I, it goes back to my approval. Yes, it goes back yeah. to my need for approval. Mm -hmm. It went back to that, um, and again, it was a mistake. It was it was a mistake to tweet that out at that time. And that, and was, I'll be that was that was the thing. Funny enough, because you know Martin Luther King Jr. has talked about black supremacy. Exactly. You know? yeah. Nelson Mandela himself was one of the people who said, "I do not look for the oppression of white people. I don't look for the oppression of black people. I don't want That's anybody right. to be oppressed." That's right. Right. But the timing, I think, was the yeah, issue. Yeah, it was. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd like say in, that in the book. Yeah, you were going, that's not what I was trying to do. No. And I think, you know, this is one of those moments where I was like, that's why books over tweets. Uh, it is. No, it is. That, that was a book, huge mistake. In the book, you made it out. Yes. You were a human being. Yes. We all misunderstand each other. Yes. Man, and I, 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 honestly, I appreciated your, just like your vulnerability, your, yeah. your, your ability to say, this is where I messed up, this is what I was trying to say. Because I was reading it and I was going like, man, I was like, yeah. why did you send the tweet? Yeah. Why did you trust Twitter? I know, I know. Twitter doesn't try to understand you. It does it. It does it. Does you know, and I, I, like, I, I first yeah. of all, I learned my lesson big time, first of all. But, but I, I do feel like, again, because of this need for approval that I was addicted to. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a matter of also exercising the, the, the will to take disapproval. Mm. You understand what I mean? Mm. Where really sometimes standing up for the right thing, not everyone is going to like you. Yeah. And, I, and again, I, I still know who I am, but at the same time, I, I mean, I, I would never ever tweet again, <laughs> to be honest. It's all gonna be cat videos and <laughs> promotion. Uh, and I've, again, I, and I really, I mean, even on this show right now, and I'm gonna let you know, I really do want to apologize to anybody who was offended by these tweets and was hurt deeply 
because as an example, as, a, as an African-American man, a right, black right, man right. here in this country, I did not want to give the, the, the perception yeah. that we're supposed to gloss this over yeah, and, no. and forget the death of George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd. Right. And I, I want to apologize to everyone right now who was ever offended because it hurt. It, and, and even back, I was trying to explain, it just got worse and worse, and this is where the book came in, because the need is for us as a people to, to actually come together and really, really be what we need to be to this country, because it's our country. This is our country. Right. We died and fought, and I'm not giving it away. This is our inheritance. I love you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, for real. You know? Thank you. No, 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 what, what, what I... <laughs> What I always say to people is, find a person who has tweeted, you will find somebody who has messed up, <laughs> and you will find someone who's been misinterpreted. Yes. Thank you so much for being oh, on the man. show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for letting me. Thank you. Terry's book, Thank Tough, you. My Journey to True Power, is available now.